Hey everyone, Reese here, and as you've probably spotted from the thumbnail and also on the desk behind me, uh, I have a bit of a collection of Sinclair stuff here which I want to take a look at in this video. Now, just before we do that, uh, I just wanted to tell the story of how this came to be in my possession. So I have two very good friends, Sam and Rachel, and by the way, this isn't the last you'll be seeing of them on the channel. And Rachel's dad, uh, Dennis, is uh, a fan of the channel and a regular viewer, shout out to Dennis. And he's a bit of a kindred spirit of mine. Um, he's a bit of a shed dweller, a bit of a uh, engineer and a tinkerer. And he volunteers over at Abbey Pumping Station in our home city of Leicester, which, uh, believe it or not, is a big old Victorian sewage pumping station. And it's best known for its four big beam engines, which are steam-powered uh, pumps. Uh, really complicated and, and massive pieces of engineering that are well over 100 years old, and all still running thanks to that team of volunteers. And one of his fellow volunteers was a chap called Richard, uh, by all accounts, a fellow tinkerer and uh, shed dweller and engineer and a man of very many hobbies. And sadly, a couple of weeks ago, after a short illness, Richard passed away. And it's fallen to his sister to help sort out all of his worldly belongings. And Dennis popped over there the other day to see if he could help out with the cleanup effort and spotted a pile of Sinclair computers just in a corner. And uh, he got talking to her and I said, do, do you realise there's people out there who are kind of interested in this kind of stuff, who collect this kind of stuff? Um, and she had no idea, you know, she, she just thought it was all junk. And um, he said, yeah, you know, I, I, I can give it a good home. And that's how it ended up in my possession uh, via Sam, who very kindly uh, brought it all over for me. So I want to do this stuff justice, obviously because of the story behind it, um, but I'm not really, um, really knowledgeable about Sinclair computers and about the Spectrum and, and about that kind of thing. So uh, if you are and you're watching this, uh, please do let me know down in the comments uh, what I could do with all of this stuff. Longer term, I think I'd like to get it fixed up and uh, give it a good home, either uh, donate it to a museum or sell it all and, and donate the proceeds either um, to his family or, or to the pumping station or to another uh, relevant charity. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. But first things first, I think we should go through the boxes, uh, see what it is I have here. I'm not going to power anything up today because I want to test all of the power supplies before I do that and I don't want to blow anything up. So I just want to say uh, thank you very much to uh, to Richard's family and uh, it's very kind of you to donate this stuff and uh, I will do the best I can to make sure that it's all dealt with appropriately. So I think we'll start with the tapes, with the software side of things. And uh, the first thing that's caught my eye is this collection of magazine cover tapes here. So these are from Your Sinclair and Crash Magazine, which are obviously two big uh, Spectrum magazines back in the day. And uh, as you can see, well, maybe, hopefully, uh, these are all from 1991 and 1992. So uh, I guess maybe the magazines are still around somewhere. Uh, I don't have those, but I do have the tapes, like I say. So we've got some cool demos on here. We've got, uh, obviously, the Viz game. Um, yeah, I think that's the uh, How to Be a Complete Bastard game. Uh, it's one I've heard of, not one I've played, unfortunately. Uh, Hate I've heard of. I think that came out on quite a few different platforms. Um, yeah, so uh, some quite interesting stuff there to play with. I don't have a, an external tape deck. Um, I'm sure there probably was one at one point, but uh, that didn't uh, didn't arrive with this little collection here. Um, but as you'll see soon, that's uh, not necessarily a big problem. So yeah, magazine cover tapes. And the next thing we have is this uh, Ocean, We Are The Champions pack. So this has Super Sprint, Renegade, Rampage, uh, Barbarian, and uh, International Karate, or IK+, I believe that is. Uh, yet again, there are uh, all games that I've heard of. Uh, some really cool, cool games there. Um, screenshots on the back of the box, I guess, aren't from the uh, the uh, Spectrum versions, uh, which is always quite amusing. Um, they were always from uh, like the uh, the ST or the Amiga version, um, but still cool to see. And yeah, that's got the uh, got the original manual in there and the two tapes as well. So that's really cool. And we've got a copy of Zoids, uh, 48k Spectrum. Not a game that I've heard of, but. Uh, yeah, Zoid Star is gripped by war. Blue Zoid fights Red Zoid in a merciless battle for supremacy. Uh, ooh, I guess I need to turn those notifications off. Uh, yeah, so sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Taz Word 2, perhaps not so much fun. I think that's just a, uh, that's quite a well-known word processor on the spectrum, isn't it? 
uh, again with the manual and the uh, cassette there in the original box, the copyright 1983. Uh, we have Puznik, which is uh, an, another ocean game. Uh, looks like a uh, puzzle game, the, the puzzle game to top all puzzle games uh, if the box is to be believed. Uh, Taito's latest coin-op hit, Puznik. Very good. Uh, so yeah, that'll be a fun one to check out. I suppose we we'll look in the box. That's in the original uh, ocean bag there. That's really cool. And uh, yeah, again, the cassette and the manual in there, all complete. So, now this one looks really interesting. This is Night Shift, and this is actually industrial... Um, industrial... Might, oh, I see. Night shift, industrial might and logic. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, I see. That's a clever wordplay on uh, industrial light and magic, isn't it? So, yeah, it's a Lucasfilm game. And, uh, yeah, you, uh, quick work are needed for night shift. And you can uh, design your own characters, your own action figures from Star Wars and Indiana Jones and your favourite Lucasfilm games. Um, I'm not sure if... Um, Guybrush Threepwood will be uh, will be in there from uh, Monkey Island, or if this kind of predates that. I presume it probably predates Monkey Island. And uh, yeah, you get to run a factory churning out action figures. I think not a game I've heard of, but uh, looks uh, looks really cool. Actually, looks like a lot of fun. And yeah, yet again, cassettes, manuals, and uh, yeah, quick start guide. Oh, these are foreman's notes for the uh, for the factory. So. Uh, Cool stuff. It was always uh, cool that these uh, when these old games came with all these extra bits and bobs in the box. Something that we don't get nowadays with uh, everything being downloadable and whatnot. And this nice Sinclair Sinclair Soft branded box with some Sinclair branded tapes in it. So there's Disco Dan by Gem Software. I'm not quite sure why he would need a gun. In fact, that looks like a uh, desoldering gun. So uh, maybe there's some uh, audio equipment at the disco that needs some emergency repairs. Maybe that's what that game's about. Uh, Crazy Golf. Uh, not really sure what to say about that. Uh, Alien Destroyer by Kuma Computers. And, uh, Treasure Island. Not sure if these. I guess these are quite basic for the uh, just the card with the instructions. Copyright 1982, Amstrad. Yes, of course, after the old uh, Sinclair-Amstrad merger thing. Uh, something else that I'm quite keen to learn all about. It'd be nice to discover uh, Sinclair's kind of history and stuff through these machines. I think I'll make a series of videos uh, where I just cover each one and, and kind of get it up and running and, and sort of explore the history of it. Uh, but for now, we'll just take a look through these boxes and see what we have here. So the first one I look, want to look at, uh, I think, after the games is this one. Apologies for horrible polystyrene noises. And I want to kind of go roughly in chronological order, I think, based on my understanding of when these were released, but I'll probably get it wrong. And this is a ZX81. So it comes with the ZX81 basic manual. That's cool to see. Uh, original power supply and the cables. You've got the RF cable to connect it to a TV. And we've got the, uh, sorry, got the uh, audio cables to connect it to a tape deck. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool little machine, this. Um, obviously, of course, uh, there was the ZX80, which was the white one. Um, and then the ZX81 came after that. And I think they were both uh, black and white output only, monochrome output. And uh, it was the ZX Spectrum that was the first kind of full color machine that they did. Uh, please do correct me if I'm wrong. And this has a really horrible membrane keyboard uh, that has no tactile feedback whatsoever. But of course, the uh, the appeal of these machines back in their day is that they were very, very low cost, uh, and they helped enable a lot of people who otherwise couldn't get into computing uh, to have a computer at home. So uh, that was kind of Sinclair's contribution, um, and a, a very a very noble one as well, indeed. Uh, or I seem to think so, anyway. So that's that. I'll just put that to one side. Put that back together in a moment. And we'll just check out the other ZX81 that I have here. Uh, this one's got the outer sleeve on the box, which is cool. It's very nice to see. Uh, 
does that have a date on it anywhere? Oh, I'm not quite sure. What's the... Uh, no, it doesn't. We've got a little <laughs> this diagram on the back that shows how to connect it all up. That's really cool. Just how to... Uh, all of the cables and where they all go. And again, uh, this all looks very familiar. Uh, we've got the manual as well. This one looks like it might be in slightly nicer cosmetic condition. Uh, that other one, other one had a bit of a scratch on the top, but that's really nice. Keyboard feels just as bad. Um, but yeah, you know, it's got the original feet on it as well. I think they were missing from the other one. Yeah, that's really cool to see. Really nice little machine, that, and uh, one that I'll have a lot of fun playing with. I think um, it was, was it 3D Monster Maze, which was kind of the big, uh, like the first person dungeon crawler type game that was on the ZX81. I've seen that one running. Um, so that'd be quite cool to check out. Just very carefully put this back together. Hmm. Nice little ZX81s. Very cool machines those. And uh, yeah, this is where my timeline gets a bit confused, I think, because I don't have a Spectrum here, um, but I do have a ZX Spectrum Plus. Let's have a look at this one. And this was the one with the nice keyboard and stuff, wasn't it? Uh, it's a really nice box, and it's in really good condition. And very cool. Uh, yeah, Sinclair Research Limited, 25 Willis Road, Cambridge, England. Nice to have some uh, good old British machines on the channel after all of this Atari stuff that they usually cover, eh? Really nice condition box. And we'll turn this over. Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus uh, embossed into the top of the box there, or moulded in. And there it is, there's the uh, machine itself. So it doesn't look like there's a manual with this one. It's got the original power supply. Um, always worth testing these things properly before plugging them in. And that is the Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus. I uh, always like the look of these machines and it's, it's got a nice heft to it, a nice weight. Um, kind of unlike the original ZX81 and the ZX Spectrum. And that's got that is a really nice keyboard, um, you know, for, for what was essentially a budget machine. Um, maybe not quite on par with the uh, the BBC Micro and Master oh, and the uh, Auric Atmos, uh, my absolute favourite sort of keyboards from back in those days. But um, definitely a huge improvement on the rubber keys of the original Spectrum. Uh, yeah, really lovely little machine that. That's really cool. So, another ZX Spectrum Plus. And I think, yeah, that says I'm not, that's got his uh, address on the top there, so I won't show you that, but uh, there is a label that says Spectrum Plus not working. Uh, so I presume this one's not working, or it wasn't when it went into storage, and I'm sure it's probably not miraculously uh, repaired itself. itself. Uh, again, you know, really, really nice condition. I won't take it out of the bag. Um, but yeah, that looks that looks immaculate. So uh, if nothing else, hopefully maybe I can build a working one out of the two. Uh, but I think common failures on these um, are the voltage regulator and and the RAM, of course, as with a lot of these 80s machines. Uh, so that'd be the first things to investigate. So let's investigate this box of iceberg lettuce. And I hope it isn't iceberg lettuce because it's not going to be in very nice condition uh, after all these years. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it says Spectrum Plus 2 working on there. So that was working when it went into storage. Really nice. 128K ZX Spectrum Plus 2. Nice shade of grey. And uh, yeah, reasonably good keyboard on that. And it's got the, uh, the tape deck built in as well, unlike the other machines. Uh, so yeah, that would be a fun one to get up and running. Now, funnily enough, I actually bought one of these years and years ago and I hung on to it for about 10 years, um, never did anything with it and sold it on eBay last year. And uh, now there is a ZX Spectrum Plus 2 in my life once more. So uh, 
must be fate. I guess I'm destined to uh, destined to own one. So finally, the QL, and this is a machine that I've heard of. Um, I think it was Sinclair's attempt at a, a kind of a more serious uh, upmarket business machine. Uh, if I'm right, I may not be. Um, but yeah, it's in uh, the original box. As you can see, the box is in really, really lovely condition. Uh, the back's the same as the front, just show you that. Uh, so let's get this out. Again, made in the UK, Sinclair Research Limited. Uh, still at 25 Willis Road, Cambridge. So let's extract this. So the big reveal. Oh, what a beauty, look at that. Look at that. Now that is long. Oh, nice keyboard again. Oh, a really nice keyboard. And I know very, very little about these. Um, but the one thing that I do know is that uh, they came with these micro drives instead of uh, cassettes or floppies like uh, other machines of the time. So these are the two micro drive slots. And uh, I did a little bit of research on this last night and uh, this is this is a continuous uh, magnetic tape inside here, a very tiny one. So these pull out and you can see the tape inside there uh, just like a cassette tape and it's on a continuous loop. Um, from what I saw, I'm sure it said they were five meters long which I'm not quite sure uh, how they would cram five, five meters worth of tape into that tiny cartridge, but there you go. And uh, yeah, the idea is that uh, it just plugs into uh, whichever way around it goes. I won't shove it all the way in because I don't know if it'll come back out, but uh, yeah, got the two drives there with your two micro drives. Really cool little uh, innovative storage system there. Um, apparently also the tapes would stretch over time and they were quite unreliable because of that. Um, but kind of the, the defining feature of the QL and uh, as I say, kind of designed as a more upmarket business machine than its uh, its uh, smaller uh, Spectrum and ZX, ZX80 and ZX81 uh, cousins, so to speak. So we've got the power supply in there, uh, no other cables I don't think, and this rather hefty binder, which is <laughs> one of the most impressive manuals I've ever seen. Look at this. So you've got the full index in there. Uh, we've got various uh, sections, introduction, beginner's guide. Uh, we've got uh, keywords. Is that like the basic keywords? Yep, yeah. keyword reference list. Uh, lists all super basic keywords in alphabetical order. And uh, yeah, Sinclair super basic. So yeah, it's all in here. That's quite amazing. Quite amazing. Just the condition of all of this stuff. It's just really, really nice. Um, obviously it was uh, very well looked after. So yeah, with that I think I will go back to myself in the studio and uh, interesting stuff. So there we have it, a good selection of boxed British Sinclair machines from the 1980s. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any thoughts or uh, ideas on what I could do with this stuff, uh, please do let me know down in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching, big thanks as always to my patrons and channel members whose names you can see on screen as I speak, and uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you again soon.